The tiny comp boards featured in this video have been manufactured by PCBWay, world leaders in the manufacture of high quality custom printed circuit boards. And with PCB fabrication starting for as little as $5 for 10 boards and a free $5 coupon for every new customer, you can sample their services for as little as the cost of postage. So what are you waiting for? Upload your Gerbers to PCBWay.com right now and let them help you bring your projects to life. Hey you doing everybody, greetings and welcome to today's episode of 8 Bits in the Basement. So what I got here today is my Atari 2600 clone system with 160 odd games built into it and it run in ET with ET sitting beside it. And the reason I have it out here is that I want to do a composite video modification on it today because a month or two ago I was contacted by a guy called Rudy from a YouTube channel called Rudy's Retro Intel. And he let me know that he had built a little kit. He has a little kit available that um, will build a little module that he calls the Tiny Comp. And what this Tiny Comp will do is sit inside of an old retro computer, a retro games console, and allow you to tap into the RF modulator or the RF can inside in that system. And you'll get a nice composite image that you can bring out to a modern day television. Now, the reason that the Tiny Comp exists at all is that Rudy himself, he wanted to do a modification to his own Atari 2600 a while back. And looking around on the internet, he found a schematic using a 2N2222 resistor. Now this is, or transistor. Now this is a tried and tested way of getting a composite signal from an old system. But um, the only way he could have done it was to kind of build the little circuit himself and he didn't want to have something kind of handmade inside in the system that could fall apart at any moment or create shorts inside in the in the system itself so he decided to build a little pcb tiny little thing that all the stuff would mount on and could be installed nice and neatly inside in the system and cause no hassle down the road and once he had that done he figured that well others may be interested in this very thing so he decided to create this little kit. So he was in contact with me and he asked me, would I try it out and give him some feedback on it? So that's what this video is all about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to install the tiny comp that he supplied me into this system here. And we'll see, well, number one, if we can get it to work with it. And number two, uh, what the image quality from it is like. So we'll get to that right now, way. Eh? So when the postman delivers the tiny comp package to you and you run into your lab and open it up, you'll find inside in the envelope, not just enough pieces to make one tiny comp, but enough to make two. And that's because each and every order contains enough parts to build two tiny comp units. So inside in the kit, you'll find six resistors. You've got two 2.2 kilo ohm resistors, two 3 kilo ohm resistors and two 75 ohm resistors. On top of that, you'll find two transistors and their value are 2N2222. And they're the guys that'll take the weak enough composite signal going into the RF module on whatever device you want to use this kit on and they will amplify that to something that a TV can use. And in order to keep all these components together so that they work properly, you will also receive two of these. So this guy here will hold our three resistors and also our transistor in place. And also you'll notice that over on the left hand side here, there are a couple of holes that we can put cables into. We've got one that's marked three, and that will take our five volt DC from somewhere on the console to power the unit. We've also got four here, which will be the input for our, of our composite signal from the device that we want to use it with. And also we have VO, which is our video output or our amplified composite signal coming out through that. And then we've got a couple of ground holes as well that we'll use for ground on our five volt in and also for ground on our composite out to TV as well. Okay, so I'm after managing to build up the little tiny comp board. And all in all, it took me only about 12 minutes to build it. Well, because there's not many components on it and actually the build went quite well. But keep in mind that what you get with this tiny comp board component wise are just what you see here. All the cables and the bit of heat shrink here, you're going to have to supply yourself. Now, the heat shrink that's on them, Rudy recommended that be put there to 
prevent any potential shorts between components because they're so tightly packed together. And I did actually have one little problem with the transistor here, but I'll get into that in a moment. The cables here, this is solid core wire, and this is the stuff that I'm going to be using on the inside of the Atari itself. So I've got red for five volt, I've got black here for the ground for the five volt, and I'm using this green cable or bluish green cable for the composite signal from the RF. So this will be our composite in to the tiny comp to be amplified. And um, what I've decided to do to get the amplifi amplified signal out to the TV set is I got an RCA cable. So this here is RCA to RCA to male RCA connectors, one either end of the cable. And what I did was I chopped off the connectors from one end. So these are going to plug into audio and video on the TV. And then I brought the red guy, the ground, which is the outer uh, ring on this RCA connector and the pin, which is, well, the inner pin. I brought the inner pin to the video out, which would be our amplified composite signal out of the tiny comp. And I brought the ground from it into one of the ground positions on the tiny comp itself. So that should plug into the TV and give us composite video. The white guy I'm going to use for audio out to the TV. So I've left the other side of the cable here just hanging like this and we'll find where it needs to go in on the Atari itself and solder it in place. Now, the thing I just wanted to say about the transistor here is that this is a metal canned transistor. So it's kind of high quality transistor, but the problem is everything is so closely packed together that if you set it in properly, there is a little nub on the transistor. I'll show you here on this one that designates uh, where the emitter pin is. So that's here. And if you set it into the tiny comp board and you push it right down, that little knob actually prevents you from putting in the three kilo ohm resistor because it covers the hole. So what I had to do was to stand it off the board like this. And I probably stood it off much higher than I needed to. But um, that way I can be sure that at least it wasn't obstructing the hole and it's still going to work away fine. But um, that was the only little problem I came into uh, when building this board. But what we're going to do now is we're going to put it in to the Atari itself and we'll see if we can find the correct locations to solder in these three wires and also the audio wire. And we'll see if the whole thing gives us a better a better picture on screen than we were getting up to now with RF. Okay, so with my tiny comp constructed, it was time to join it into my Atari 2600 clone unit. So what I did first off was I checked that the Atari was working properly. And once I was satisfied that was the case, I took it out of its plastics and I turned the PCB over so that the solder side of it was exposed. The next thing to do was to bring ground and power to the tiny comp unit from the board. So I found a ground point and I soldered black wire to that. And I found a five volt point and soldered the red wire to that. Now all that was left to go from the tiny comp to the Atari was that little kind of greenish blue turquoise wire that I had. And what I want to find for that is a composite signal, a weak composite signal that I can feed to the tiny comp to have it be amplified and fed out to the television. So the most logical place to look for a signal like that is down in the bottom left hand corner here where we find the RF can. And I probed around with my multimeter looking for a low voltage signal that could potentially be a composite signal. And I found three points that were at 1.8 volt. Now with everything turned on, the TV turned on, I just touched that bluish green wire to those points to see if I get a clear crisp signal on screen. I didn't. So I had checked around all around the uh, RF modulator and I didn't find any signal that I could use there. So I know that this Atari clone unit is based on the 6591 Atari on a chip and that chip is found here. So what I did was I had a look on the internet to see if I could find a pinout for this to see if there was video I could use from that chip directly. And what I found was that pin nine on this chip gives chroma and pin 27 gives luma.
Now, those two signals like that aren't of much use to us, but what they've done on this board, or what you can do yourself if you want to make a composite signal from Luma and Chroma, is they've joined the two together with a one nanofarad capacitor. So once I saw that had been done, what I did was I touched my uh, turquoise wire here to pin 29, and I got a lovely signal on the TV. So to do the audio end of it was actually quite easy because pin 20 on this chip gives audio. So I just followed that along the board a bit and I just tacked in my white RCA to, um, to that. And now I've got a working composite mod on my Atari clone board. So I'll put it all back together and I'll show that to you right now. Okay, so this is the part of the video where we have a look and see did this actually work or was it worth doing? So what you can see here is I'm after conserving the old RF cable as well. So I've got actually two outputs coming out of this. I've got my RF and I've got my new uh, composite as well. So uh, what I've done is I've installed the tiny comp in this system in such a way that it's completely reversible. It can be taken out and it's as if nothing had ever been done to the cabinet. So I like when we can do mods like that. But what I'll do is I'll turn it on with ET in it once more and see if you can see a difference on screen. Now, so here's our ET after popping up through the tiny comp mod that we've made. So the picture is clearer, but I'm not sure that the camera is picking it up. So what I did was I took a little bit of footage earlier to compare the two. So looking at ET, this is the original RF output. You'll see that there's, the image isn't crystal clear. Now it's not bad because the, the RF output on this actual little system isn't too bad at all, but you can see some kind of shimmering through it. And you can also see some little kind of white dots, little bits of static shown up on the screen from time to time. If we switch over to what the tiny comp gives out, you'll see that the picture is a lot clearer. Now, is it perfect? No, it's far from being perfect, but it's still more than adequate and uh, it greatly, greatly improves your viewing pleasure on this. Let's have a little look at one of the 160 games that was built in on this. This is a motorcycle racing game. And you'll see through the RF again, the image isn't fantastic because again this is a much brighter picture than what we had on ET so you can see the imperfections a lot clearer and you'll notice some kind of um, vertical lines in there kind of artifacts in the image as well if we switch over to what the tiny comp is given the image is improved but again like I say it's not perfect those vertical lines are still in evidence there so that is I believe something that's coming from the um, from the actual Atari clone itself and it probably could be improved if I went around and fiddled around inside of the RF modulator and removed capacitors not capacitors resistors perhaps that might improve it somewhat but I don't want to do that and finally just as one more little comparison I'll show you on a very dark game which is demon attack here first of all with the RF and you'll see it looks very good. There's white flashes on the screen there every time we get killed, and yet it looks to be fine. And again, with the tiny comp output. And there seems to be very little difference when it's a dark image that you have on screen. What are my thoughts on the tiny comp? Well, I built it easily enough. I installed it, took a little bit of work on this particular system, but the image quality speaks for itself. The composite signal from it is miles better than what I was getting in RF before, but it does make sense. I mean, the circuit that the Tenenkamp uses is years old and it's tried and trusted and proven to work time and time again. So what Rudy has done is he has effectively made a nice small little PCB to hold all the components together so that you can install it pretty much anywhere inside the system. And I think a kit like that is handy to have around a workshop. If ever you're repairing units and you want to test quickly, if a unit is given a signal, for example, if the RF modulator is broken in some way, or if it's only got a SCART out and you don't want to go to the trouble of making a SCART cable without knowing if, um, if there is actually a signal coming from the unit or not, or again, if you just want to composite mod a known working system. So they're handy to have around. And I think they're doubly handy for somebody who's only starting out in electronics, who has a little bit of experience in soldering and whatnot, but um, doesn't really feel ready to make up their own little 
boards or whatever. So I think um, I think there is probably a need for or a partial need at least for this type of a little kit and I think it was a good idea to make one. So um, if it interests you have a look in the description and everything you need to pick up a few of these kits for yourself is listed down there. So um, until the next time everybody I bid you a fond farewell and we'll talk to you in, in the next episode. Bye bye.